Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm broadcasting to you live from beautiful Budapest, capital city of Hungary, situated in Central Europe. Hi, Mario Espitia. Hi, Pachu. Hi, Joy. Hi, Sahil. Hi, Preeti. Sina. Hi, Nidami. Good to see many students in on time. Today, we are looking at IELTS speaking part three, practicing and giving examples for band nine. Of course, second to last day of January, Wednesday. Materials are coming from our websites, aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Uh, that website looks like this with the blue background. Click on that big red button, join our premium course, get your six exams. Uh, over 100 hours of video lessons and general IELTS is like this with the green background. Click that red button, join us there. Uh, when you join, you get help, we get help, we're all happy, everybody passes the IELTS, and it's a great world ahead. All right. Uh, so, again, for general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. Join us there. Okay, uh, you can get our books from Amazon, AE Helps Academic IELTS. Search for that or GE Helps General IELTS. If you have questions for us, uh, please let me know. Um, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, Sahil, uh, which thumbnail are you talking about? Let me know and I'll uh, take a look or have our text look at that. Um, Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. All right. Uh, our schedule for the next bit here, uh, Central European time. Classes are Wednesday to Saturday, 15 to 16 o'clock, CET, Central European time. Today, speaking part three. Tomorrow, listening strategy and practice. On Friday, task one, pie charts. On uh, Saturday, members chat class. Members, uh, Sahil, please um, send us requests. Uh, video caption. Okay, Sahil, I'll check that out. I'm not sure which video caption you speak of, but I'll check that out. Okay. All right. Hi, Kyber. Good to see you in this class as well. Uh, then for... The next week, this will be our schedule, uh, speaking part one and two, and then all the way until Saturday. Um, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we're doing video shoots. We will be releasing HD videos as well. Uh, you can also see this schedule until February 16th in our uh, members and chat and comment forum. Uh, so you can always know what is happening when. All right. Oh, I see uh, what you're saying, Sahil. Thank you for that. Okay, so the description is off. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'll check that afterwards as well. All right, students, so we're doing speaking today, so make sure you speak nice and loud and repeat questions, repeat answers, repeat what I say. I really uh, want to imagine uh, that uh, you are actually saying at home, what I'm saying here in the studio, okay? Uh, so it's again, practice for you. I'm quite confident in knowing what I'm saying and I want you to be the same. Okay, let's warm up a bit. So you get to your exam and uh, the examiner will start by asking for your identification. They will ask you to sit down and then they will ask for your full name. What is your full name? Jot, congratulations on your speaking. Sahil, I know you did it as well, so congratulations. Hi, Kisi, I know your speaking is just coming up, so good luck on your speaking exam. All right, so let's start. What is your full name? That will be... The first question, uh, Sonia Mahe says, my name is Sonia Mahe, and what should I call you, Sonia? Will be the follow-up question to that. 
so you can uh, preempt it and say, please just call me Sonia. All right, Mario Espetia says, my full name is Mario Esteban Espetia. Please refer to me as Mario. Great name, Mario. My younger brother's name is also Mario, by the way. All right, Jason G says, my given name is Jason and my family name is G. Just call me Jake, Jace, Jason, whatever have you. Okay, that's good. Yeah, sure. My full name, or let's go this way. My surname is Smith. My given name is John. Please just call me John. All right. Great. Now, uh, the examiner will say, okay, uh, I will ask you a question or two to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic for part one. Do you currently work or study? Okay. Let's answer that question, students. Do you currently work or study? Give me a nice, complete, clear, specific to you answer, okay? It's very important in the IELTS speaking that you sound original. You don't have to sound unique, but you have to sound original, okay? It's very important. I think a lot of students confuse complex, unique, and original. So remember this tip while you're thinking of that question. In IELTS, you have to sound original. This is not the same as unique or complex. It is usually not a good idea to sound unique because you increase your error rate, okay? Which means you make more mistakes. Okay, so sound original, but not necessarily unique. Uh, so let me look at some of your answers to the questions. It's good. Sahil Singh says, I recently completed my education from Rian International School, and now I'm learning French aside from English. Sahil, uh, good. So that's great. That's a good example of original, but not necessarily unique. Other people complete... Uh, their international studies, probably from Rianne as well, and they also learn French. So it's original, but it's not necessarily unique. So it will get a good score, Sahil, okay? And you're not running the danger of making too many mistakes. Jason G says, I'm a full-time student. I am pursuing master's in business administration in Warsaw University, uh, and I'm in my final year. Yeah, I think you just accidentally wrote Warsaw University twice there, Jason. Uh, Pachu says, at present, I am working uh, in an FMCG company as a food technologist. I enjoy my work, and I want to get higher certification, so I'm uh, studying and doing IELTS also. Good, Pachu. Okay, Begzod says. Where is Begzod? I don't see Begzod anymore. I'll get you next time, Begzod. Uh, Preeti says, I'm working as a lecturer in a medical university my, where my work is not only to teach uh, bachelors in nursing, but also uh, grooming their abilities uh, so that they are uh, very professional. Okay. Uh, Fraziox, which is correct, studying BCom honors. Uh, you have to say the full Fraziox. You shouldn't say BCom honors or BCom ons. Uh, you should say business and commerce. Okay. I think is what you're trying to say there. All right, good. 
so those are some good answers. Um, here's my answer. Again, remember to paraphrase. At the moment, I am working as an English teacher who specializes in IELTS training and I am also completing this exam to prove my qualifications. All right, that would be my honest answer. Uh, again, original, not necessarily unique. At the moment, I'm working as an English teacher who specializes in IELTS training, and I'm also completing this exam to prove my qualifications. All right, fantastic, students. So still just some warm-up here. Let's do one more. I really want you to practice. If I miss your responses, don't worry. I'll get different ones at different times. We'll get lots done today. What do you like to do before work or study? Okay, answer that question. What do you like to do before work or study? So the IELTS examiner asks you, what do you like to do before work or study? By the way, some really nice answers to that first question. In the chat, I'm thinking of uh, Muhammad Fazal and uh, Jayarthna. Kyber, yes, I'm working in pay company in logistics. Okay, there's a couple of mistakes there, Kyber. Yes, I'm working with pay company uh, in logistics. Aside from my job, I'm also learning English as my third language. Good. Uh, Kyber, try not to repeat the word working so close in proximity. Okay, otherwise it's good for that first question. Okay, here we go. Uh, Amrit Beer Singh says, before sitting for study, I do meditation, which helps me to improve my concentration. Really nice sentence, Amrit Beer Singh. Um, again, before sitting for study, I do meditation, which helps me improve my concentration. It's nice. Uh, I like how you're using an adjective clause. A little bit more, you could add some quantitative language. I sit, uh, before I sit for study, I do meditation for 20 minutes. Okay, uh, which helps uh, improve my concentration. So add in that little bit of quantitative language and your band score will surely be going up, up, and up. Okay, so that's great. All right, Marina, I love making coffee and thinking about my day uh, before I embark on work or study? Yeah, use the question, just paraphrase it, Marina. That will uh, get you a better mark, okay? All right, good job, students. So then you have some more questions on a uh, general topic for part one. That's usually just some simple Q&A, okay? So it's some simple back and forth. I'm the examiner, I ask you a question, you give me a nice answer, explanation, and a smooth flowing example. Then we get into part two. For part two, I give you a card, you prepare for one minute, you give me some responses like we did last week. Last week, we looked at a cue card uh, which asked about a, a person who is athletic, okay, a person you know who is athletic. And then part three will be more detailed questions connected to part two, okay? The examiner will actually say that to you. They'll say, now I'm going to ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. So the examiner says this, okay? The examiner says now, and it's very standard. So the examiners uh, for IELTS, they actually get trained to be almost robotic in their instructions. So you should pretty much hear the exact same sentences coming out of the examiner's mouth for these instructions, okay? So now I will ask you, or they'll say now for part three, 
I will ask you some more questions connected to the topic of part two. What should you remember to do when you hear the examiner say that? What should you remember to do? Uh, Kritika Bhatia, this class, we're not doing part two. Uh, there are other videos on the channel for that. Check that out. But we'll definitely be doing part two on some other days, okay? Um, so when the examiner says this, now for part two, I will ask you some more questions connected to the topic of part two or related to the topic of part two. What should that what idea or what important thought should that give you? Yes, Jason, you can. You can ask for clarification if you don't get it. Okay. Uh, so Haifa says uh, that should remind you to connect our ideas. Uh, Haifa, absolutely. Thank you for that. Good on you. Okay. So it should remind you about that. Okay. So this... When you hear this phrase, this must remind you to connect ideas and answers among each other. All right, that's important. So part three is a little bit more communicative. It's a little bit more conversational than part one. What that means is you'll get a question like this. Let's talk about fitness and health. What are the benefits of daily exercise? So you'll start talking and giving your answer and the examiner will probably interrupt you at some point or definitely follow up and say, well, are there any negatives? Uh, so then you have to say, oh, yes, absolutely. So what you want to do is you want to make your connections within these answers. Okay, so you want to connect there. You want to connect here. You want to connect uh, back to here to part two. All right. So you want to think about part three as a true conversation that you're having with another professional, in this case, your grandfather, your grandmother, and you're connecting your responses. This helps you to be original. Okay. Uh, the IELTS people do not like hearing memorized phrases that make you sound like you're reciting an IELTS textbook. So if you give answers like, there are a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, the reason for exercise is physical strength. Secondly, the reasons for exercise uh, include mental health. Okay, it's not terrible, uh, but you can't sound like that. So you can't sound like you're reading out of a textbook. Okay. They don't like that. All right. Uh, you need to sound original. So for that, you need to connect your answers among each other. Okay. So let's do that. Let's answer one or two questions and then let's really focus on making some connections among our answers. Okay. So, uh, let's answer this one first. Do your best here. This is just the first question. So don't worry too much about connections. Uh, just give me a good answer. So the IELTS examiner asks you, uh, what are the benefits of daily exercise? Give me a nice answer for this, students. What are the benefits of daily exercise? Full sentence. Baljeet says, well, there are tons of perks for each individual. The most obvious is physical strength. Okay, sure. So there are tons of perks for doing exercise regularly and the most obvious is physical strength. Okay, good. Uh, let's see a couple more answers there. So Begzad, I promised I'd catch your next one. So here we go. Begzad says, I suppose, don't mix Begzad. I definitely suppose it's awkward English. So I suppose that working, um, out regularly on a regular basis can not only improve 
the function of the brain, but also helps people keep in shape. I would reverse those Begzod. So I would read yours like this to be correct. Otherwise, it's a good idea, Begzod. The correct way is, I suppose that working out on a regular basis not only uh, keeps people in shape, but also improves brain function. Okay, that would be the correct way, Begzod, because the more obvious is the keeping in shape, the less overt is uh, brain function, okay? But otherwise, very good idea and nice use, Begzod, of that correlative conjunction. Sahil says, <clears throat> I reckon that there are tremendous benefits to regular exercise. It helps keep people uh, in shape. It increases stamina. Moreover, it makes us physically as well as mentally fit. Okay, good. Now, um, I can sneak my smooth flowing example in there. Okay, in part three, it'll work. So this is why I go to the gym uh, Monday to Friday before work from 7 to 8 a.m. Okay, so sneak it in there. Get that nice little quantitative visual uh, example or added information in there. Okay, so there are tons of perks for doing exercise regularly, and the most obvious is physical strength. Uh, <clears throat> and mental health, sure. Uh, this is why I go to the gym Monday to Friday before work from 7 to 8 a.m. And then the examiner will interrupt and kind of sneak in uh, a question and say, uh, are there any negatives? And they might be very quick to get that in there. Are there any negatives? So what's an answer to that? Now, you could say, no, there aren't, uh, which is probably not true. And it's a weak or short answer. So I definitely avoid, uh, uh, definitely uh, suggest avoiding saying no, there aren't or no, there isn't. It's not the end of the world if you say that, but I would probably say something. Um, all right. Are there any negatives? Means are there any negatives to doing daily exercise? Okay, so it doesn't make sense if you say negative aspects of exercise is increased obesity or disease. But you, this is not if you don't exercise, this is if you exercise. Vadaraj Kulai says the disadvantage of working out is there are chances of tearing a muscle, injury. Uh, absolutely, sure. I think there are a few demerits, such as it, it is not suited for older people. I don't know about that, Sahil. I think elderly people should exercise as well. But hey, if you can argue that, why not? Um, Preeti says, yes, there are some disadvantages. One wrong step in exercise can be the cause of serious injury. Absolutely, yeah. Lift the weight wrong or drop it on your feet. Ah, I don't know if you've ever done that before. I haven't so far, but... Yikes. Uh, I've hurt myself working out. Absolutely. So um, another student, I'm trying to find that again, says, unless we have some physical constraints, there are absolutely no negatives. Um, yeah, no, I think the negatives, again, visualize is that you could uh, injure yourself. OK, so um, hmm. when this follow-up question comes. So this is the examiner's follow-up question. Uh, I think students are more commonly caught by surprise with the follow-up questions than the original question. So the original question says, what are benefits of daily exercise? And I think students, many of you, will answer that nice and smooth and well. So you'll say, hmm, well, there are tons of perks. And then the examiner says, are there any negatives? And especially when the examiner interrupts you with that follow-up conversational question, uh, then the students are sometimes like, Whoa, what? Did you just interrupt me? That wasn't nice. Um, and they even miss the question. If you do, don't panic. Just say, I'm sorry, what did you ask me? 
uh, and then they'll say, are there any negatives? Okay, so don't panic. It's a conversation. Are there any negatives? If it catches you by surprise, just ask for a bit of time. Hmm, just give me a second to think. Okay, uh, it, it can be uh, very useful, especially for these surprise interruptive follow-up questions. Okay, so hmm, just give me a moment to think, please. Yes, I suppose that the risk of injury is always present when uh, doing exercise. Especially if done in excess. Last year, I tore a muscle because I lifted too much weight. Okay? Uh, working out. So that would be a good response. So that's the student response there, okay? Again, uh, students repeat nice and loud after me, okay? So what are the benefits of daily exercise? There are tons of perks for doing exercise regularly, and the most obvious is physical strength and mental health. Uh, this is why I go to the gym Monday to Friday before work from 7 to 8 a.m. Are there any negatives? Hmm. Just give me a moment to think, please. Uh, yes, I suppose that the risk of injury is always present when doing exercise, especially if done in excess. Last year, I tore a muscle because I lifted too much weight working out. Notice my uh, complex language. Try to follow the speed as well uh, that I'm using. All right, uh, we're going on to the next question, and I see that... Um, uh, many of you are already uh, jumping the gun here. So the question is, repeat after me, which sports are the best to do or play for long-term health? Why? All right, again, you might ask for a bit of time to think, and then you can come up with some clever questions or clever answers as some of our uh, students have done. Sunil Forex, by the way, that's a good answer for the previous question. Uh, Begzod says, yoga and meditation are two of the most essential sports for people who want to uh, take part in long-term uh, physical exercises. They both take a lot of practice and time to see results. Uh, Begzod, uh, interesting answer. Yoga, I get. I'm not sure how meditation is a sport. Uh, you might have to explain that more clearly. That would be a bit confusing for me. Um, and um, otherwise, not bad. Okay. Uh, your Salem, Brehan, says the disadvantages depend on the kinds of exercises people are doing. For example, there's the risky kind of exercises, such as those who are involved in heavy weight lifting or excessive stretching. Uh, your solemn good, a couple of corrections there. Don't use the word you, okay? Uh, and uh, weight lifting, you have a missing word there. Your solemn, by the way, welcome as one of our new members. Uh, make sure, oh, you sent me an email, I saw that. So I'll hook you up with the perks, the uh, practice exams and so forth. So welcome aboard, your solemn. Uh, that was for the previous question, by the way, ladies and gents. All right, Prob Tool, sorry, Prob Tour says, according to me, every physical sport is beneficial to our health, but cricket is very important to play because this sport is physical work, uh, essential, but mental appearance is also varies. Okay, Prob, uh, the, the first part, so according to me, every physical exercise is beneficial for people's health. But cricket is very important to play because it is physical work. And I'm not sure what you're trying to say at the end of the sentence. So you want to rephrase that. Okay, it's incoherent English, the last seven, eight words. All right. Um, 
Another answer that's a kind of a funny one, but it's an okay one, is uh, by Max Die and Vlogs. Says MMA is the best sport to play or do in the long term. Now, Max Die, you might think that MMA, which stands for Mixed Martial Arts, is um, a funny answer and maybe opposite to the question in, at hand uh, because people get injured, but not necessarily, okay, if you can explain it. So if you say that uh, I th believe one of the best sports in the long term is uh, mixed martial arts, although it's uh, somewhat dangerous and injuries are common, this sport teaches people to be strong, confident, and defend themselves uh, in case of danger. One of my friends was attacked by some criminals and because he's been practicing MMA all his life, was able to defend himself. So it could be a very good answer, Max Dai, as long as you can explain or express that. Uh, Chitra says, says, I think it's swimming. Okay, and I believe swimming is also probably one of the healthiest sports. Okay. Uh, so here we go. I believe that swimming is perhaps the best sport to pursue long term as it is low impact and an all around Workout for the body. Not only this, but the isolated low gravity environment is great for mental relaxation. Okay. Now here, the examiner might say, uh, can you expand on what you mean by low impact sport? Uh, so can you do that? Can you tell me what we mean by low impact sport? Explain that to me. Okay. So again, remember the examiner in part three is asking you these follow up questions. All right. What is low impact sport? Can you explain that for me? So I'm teaching you some vocabulary here as well. I realize that I'm giving you some high level advanced lexical resource, but my goal here is to help you learn new words, learn strategies, grammar, uh, and gain confidence for IELTS. So when you see new words here, learn them. So Niraj Khatri says, it's like giving low pressure to the body. Yes, Niraj, you're on the right track. Preeti says, it means that there's a lower chance of injury. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So lower impact means there's less stress on the body. There's less physical force uh, put on the joints and the bones, especially and a lower chance of injury, right? So uh, by this, I mean that there is less physical strain placed on the joints and bones, therefore a lower chance of uh, injury and as I mentioned, I work out before my job, 30 minutes of which is swimming laps. Okay, so there is my answer to that follow-up question, okay? 
Repeat after me from the top here, ladies and gents. So repeat after me. Which sports are the best to do or play for long-term health? Why? I believe that swimming is perhaps the best sport to pursue long-term as it is low impact and an all-around workout for the body. Not only this, but the isolated low gravity environment is great for mental relaxation. Can you expand on what you mean by low impact sport? By this, I mean that there is less physical strain placed on the joints and bones, therefore a lower chance of injury. And as I mentioned, I work out before my job, 30 minutes of which is swimming laps. All right. Uh, why did I put this last piece in here? So I just kind of pushed that in there. I squeezed it in there. Just get it in there. Why? Why did I get that last piece in there? Low impact political hub indirectly will mean that there's a lower chance of injury. Low impact. Impact means to hit, right? Impact. Uh, MMA would be extremely high impact. Boxing would be extremely high impact. Basketball, tennis are considered high impact sports. Uh, Sevgi Rabia says, uh, I'm giving some quantitative, uh, some quantitative answers here. Uh, Joyce says, I'm enhancing uh, my uh, answer as well. Yes, so I'm enhancing it. I'm giving some quantitative information. And... I'm connecting ideas. That's right, Begzod. Yeah, I'm connecting to one of my previous answers. So I'm connecting to my first answer here, which is I like to go to the gym Monday to Friday, uh, 7 to 8 a.m. Okay. Maybe I'll add that in to make it even more clear. The gym and the pool. Okay, so I'm making those connections. Remember that tip, okay? The examiner says, now for part three, I will ask you some questions connected or related to the topic of part two. You have to remember, oh yeah, okay, I need to connect and relate among my answers also. Okay, good. I'm happy that some of you remembered that from the beginning of class. Okay, students, here we go. Uh, next question. How have governments supported the health of the general public? How have governments supported the health of the general public? Okay, think about your answer. Meanwhile, I'll read some other answers to previous questions. So think about this one, start writing your answers, okay? And I'll give some feedback to some students. Arslan Sandibekov says, there are quite a number of aspects which governments could do, but in my city, the government has built a station of bikes, which is free to use around my hometown. Uh, in this way, they encourage citizens to keep fit. Um, okay, not bad, Arslan. A little correction here, okay? So watch the corrections. There are a number of steps which governments can take to increase public health. In my city, the government has built a bike station which is free of charge. Uh, citizens can use this, these bicycles around my hometown and thereby the government encourages people to keep fit, okay? It's a little bit more there, Arslan. You have to break up your sentences and add more clarity there, okay? Prab Tour says the government uh, has opened public gyms and playgrounds for local people uh, to uh, maintain and improve their fitness levels. As well, authorities provide free medical care for individuals. And I don't think any further improvements are needed. Uh, that will be a follow-up question, Prab, at the end. So don't worry about that one yet. Uh, notice the corrections, Prab, that I gave you. Okay. Uh, Begzod, uh, I'll take a look at the emails. Don't worry about that. I'm sure I'll catch it if I don't send me a reminder. Okay, Alien Eater says, the government has facilitated uh, a health program that encourages people to get fit. What is it, Alien Eater? What is 
the health program that the government has facilitated. By the way, Alien Eater, good attention on the present perfect, has facilitated, nice vocabulary, facilitated. Health program, not healthy program in this case, but a health program, okay? Uh, so, George says, no, actually in my country, they do not have programs for people to stay healthy. Uh, but there are some public gardens and some sports clubs. Okay, Josh, there's a couple of mistakes there. Uh, one, what's your country? I have no idea, even from your name. Uh, number two, uh, if you say that the government hasn't done anything, but there are public gardens and some uh, sports clubs, uh, then either the government has done something or you mean to say that those are private and not public. Okay, so... Both in content, you need to be uh, more clear and you need to be more expressive, all right? Uh, Preeti says, the government can help their citizens through open recreation centers with full modern equipment and also uh, cheaper than, uh, keeping them cheaper than private centers. Okay, Preeti, not bad, but you're off topic. Uh, here, how have governments supported health? So I'm not asking you for what can governments do. I'm asking what have governments built, okay? And something is missing from the answers of uh, students. Um, what's missing? What's mi what am I missing? Like, I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I've lost my cat. Uh, what, have I, what am I missing from your answers, students? There's, there's one key point that I'm really missing from your answers where I'm like, why am I not reading more of this? Okay. Uh, Rinju says, many governments are doing a lot of uh, steps, never use the word things. So many governments are taking a lot of steps for making the public aware of the importance of health. In my city, the government has introduced free cycle stations for public use. Rinju, good. Avoid the word things, okay? Use the word has instead of had as present perfect. They're still available, okay? People can still use those cycle stations, all right? What am I missing, students? There's something missing from all these answers. Uh, let's see. Uh, has anybody answered me? Uh, Batul al says, opinions are missing. Not quite, Batul. You're kind of on the right path, but it's not quite. Uh, Vadiraj says the suggestions, nah, not so much. No, Begzad, not the second question. It's not what I'm missing. What am I missing? I'm missing something. Not suggestions. Examples a little bit. I'm missing the examples a little bit, Savalia, absolutely. But even more so, yeah, the examples are, uh, yeah, they're missing, but I'm missing something else. Well, let me give you my answer, and then we'll see if, um, <coughs> we'll see if you, uh, you pick up on uh, what I'm trying to suggest here. Okay. Well, in my city of Victoria, the government has encouraged uh, public health by building recreation centers in every community and making them very accessible by um, providing um, uh, free entrance. This, uh, I go to my local recreation center for my morning swims.
So you've probably figured out what's missing. Let's see. Now, if I ask you the question again, what was missing? Uh, then uh, please tell me the correct answer. So what was missing? So this is my answer. So again, repeat after me. Well, in my city of Victoria, the government has encouraged public health by providing recreation centers in every community and making them very accessible by uh, providing free entrances. Uh, in regard to what I was saying before, I go to my local recreation center for my morning swims. Ah, Lutf, L-U-T-F, very quickly says, oh yeah, connections. Aditya says, oh yeah, the connections. Oh yeah, connections, Vanity Sean, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so students, for the next questions, okay, just for practice and to really get it deep, deep in your memory, uh, focus on these connections, okay? Focus on connecting among your answers, okay? Yes, example and connections, okay? So then the examiner might uh, follow up with, uh, can you give me suggestions for further improvement? Okay. So can you give me suggestions for further improvement? Okay. Answer that question for me. Focus to include an example and make a connection. Okay. So can you give me suggestions for further improvement that the government can do? Now, avoid the really easy out, which is no, I can't. The government is great and they're doing everything possible. Uh, yeah, it's okay, but it's better to actually say some suggestions. Okay, uh, Simranjit says the government should increase tax on junk food. Why, Simranjit? always at least answer the why question, okay? Because this will deter people from eating unhealthy foods that uh, result in obesity and heart disease, okay? So at least give me that much more, Simranjit. Yeah, okay, Mad Max says, uh, yes, governments could continue to build more recreation centers as uh, the ones now are always crowded in the morning, so the government should increase the size of the pool, perhaps. Absolutely, Mad Max. Good. Yeah, I like it. You made that connection. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, Vadiraj says they can uh, create free competitions to promote staying fit. Like what, Vadiraj? Definitely the examiner would be uh, thinking, what do you mean? What do you want to say by that? Begzad says, I do believe that these, uh, I do believe that these improvements are enough for the public as there are a lot of important problems to solve. Begzad, I'm not quite sure where you're going with that. Uh, Murad says, I would say, first of all, we have to expand the number of these facilities and make them more accessible for everyone. Good. So you're relating to what you just said. Um, when you say everyone, you might say something like including people with disabilities as the current recreation centers have stairs and are not accessible by wheelchair. Okay, that will get you band scores for sure, uh, Morad. All right, so keep that in mind. But otherwise, a good answer, good connection. Uh, Grace Kakao says the government should cope with the demands of the people in the community uh, and uh, add more facilities to recreation centers such as yoga rooms. Okay. So good. All right, good. Now you're making some connections. Fantastic, students. Uh, yeah, so we could say, um, yes, uh, I would suggest... The government to initiate free workshops for local residents to educate them about uh, healthy fitness, such as the importance of uh, doing 
low impact sports versus high impact sports. Okay, so there is my connection. We talked about those low impact sports and now we talk about the high impact sports, low impact sports and education programs that teach the community about the difference and the importance of this. So that's one more step the government can take to um, improve public health. Okay, so that's great. All right, I'll read a few more here. So Political Hub says, secondly, the government should also provide some free gym centers and uh, physical health help center to keep physical, to keep healthy of their people. Political Hub, uh, you definitely want to review that answer. You have the word physical in there way too many times. It's a little bit awkward and confusing. Okay, Sam says, the government should encourage people to join these recreation parks by making uh, the public aware through more advertising. And also they can organize some marathons so that people uh, take more interest in this sport. Okay, that's pretty good, Sam. There's a couple corrections there. Watch your abbreviations like people, okay? All right, uh, Preeti says, definitely there is still some uh, lacuna in the government, so it could mitigate by established well recreation center with full both equip and modern technology. All right, Preeti, I get what you're saying, but you're saying it in an awkward way. Let's try that a little bit better. Uh, definitely there is still some room for the government to improve uh, public health by establishing well-equipped recreation centers uh, with modern uh, technology and qualified trainers. Okay, that would be the correct way, uh, Preeti, to say that. Okay. Alien Eater says, the government should focus on the problem as a whole on a large scale. They should educate the math masses with health infomercials to have long-term uh, and lasting impact on the country. That's nice, Alien Eater. So infomercials and education is your answer as well. Sunil Forex, the government should organize competitions for swimming between uh, the state and district level to boost health awareness among people to be better. Between Sunil is just two, okay? Among is many. All right, students, that's some great answers. Have a look at the next set here. Let's talk international sports. What are the biggest international sporting events in the world? Why are these so popular? It is acceptable that countries can buy athletes from other national or yeah, other nationalities. So it is acceptable that countries can buy athletes from other nationalities to represent them in international events. So is that acceptable? Is it acceptable that countries can buy athletes? How do you think international sporting events will change in future years? Students, for these three questions, later today or tomorrow, take out your mobile phone, your smartphone, open up your voice recorder function or your voice recorder app, record your answers, think about answer, explain, example, smooth flowing, use quantitative language, have original examples, not memorized from a book, okay, not templates, original examples, Make connections among your answers. Connect among your answers. If you don't get it the first time, do it a second or a third time until you get this. Then you can send your recording to me for a band estimate and a little bit of feedback, okay? And uh, I will be happy to do that. Uh, send the audio file. If it's audio with a little bit of video, that's okay as well. I've had a couple students do that, that's fine. Uh, and send this homework to my 
email address, my company email address, adrian at aehelp.com, okay? Again, these materials, these strategies are taken from our world-class websites. For general IELTS, it's giltshelp.com. Click that red button, join us. For academic IELTS, it's aehelp.com. Click that red button and join us. Learn the right strategies, practice the right strategies, and get a high band score the next time you sit your IELTS exam. Okay, don't waste your time with bad materials. Free materials are sometimes not the greatest. They're okay, but not the greatest sometimes. So be careful uh, what you study from. All right, students, that's it for me for today. I hope you were able to pick up some uh, useful information and get some good practice. Uh, tomorrow we are doing uh, listening strategy and practice. Okay, so listening tomorrow. Um, Jason, you're asking me for reading before your test. I'm not sure, Jason, if that will fit. I don't know when your test is, uh, but uh, lots of help on the website for reading, Jason. So just send me an email and I'll help you out, okay? Uh, you're very welcome, Violetta. Uh, see you later, Murad. Uh, you're very welcome, Sajad Ali. Uh, Mad Max, good night to you as well. Uh, Hakim, hi to you as well. Pachu, always good to see you in class. Begzad, bye for now. Uh, good night, Preeti. Good night to all of you. Get a great night's rest if it's late in your country. If it's early in your country, then be positive for the day ahead, and I will certainly see you tomorrow. Much love to all of you. Bye for now.